Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, thank you for the work that you do, and uh, definitely want to express my gratitude. Um, two of my favorite things that I've heard you say are, when you meet, you will know. If you have deliberately calibrated something into vibrational beingness, when it manifests, you'll recognize it. The degree of your deliberation is the degree of that knowing, that certainty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the other one was about, um, you don't have to go looking for this. So these are two quotes. My question is around how to meet a romantic partner. I really struggle with that. Well, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but sometimes you can't help it. Yeah. Why do you want the rain? Why do I want? Why do you want the rain? It's not why do you want to fill the void and the absence of loneliness and drudgery of going through this world alone. That's not going to get you there. But what is it about that that is appealing? <sighs> Fulfillment, satisfaction, fun, happiness. Just, you know, it seems like there's yeah. so much desire. Those are words. Mm -hmm. Those are words that are not actually, if you really want to know, all that moving. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It was like, why do you want this? One, two, five, seven, nine, eight. <laughs> what is it about a uh, significant other in your life that is so delicious? What is that? You ever had it? Yes. Do you know others who do? I, I don't know. I guess it's hard to say because I'm not. Sometimes you're up close to somebody that it's apparent to you, and that really is irrelevant, really, what anybody else is doing. But what is relevant to you? What is it about that that you would like to conjure mentally and vibrationally and enjoy? See, if you can find a piece of something that you like, and you can focus on it and enjoy it, it has to become more, and it will increase in velocity and momentum until it can't not be and you will feel the velocity of that even though you don't know where or when or who you can just feel it so you feel that you're just on the verge of this which is like an eagerness for life that really feels good right well to fine-tune this a little bit it seems like my questions are generally around this my experience of life of seeing all of these people and there's so much, when you talked about desire and doubt, like that's me. There's so much fear and resistance. And so it's simpler. Let's not go down that muddy road. It's like this. I want to be adored and I want to adore. Those are just words, but feel that. Get yourself into a position mentally where you are observing someone who is clear and communicative and tuned in and oozing good feelings and appreciating you while you're appreciating the other in other words there's this feeling of appreciation and each of you has better timing than you've ever had it's like you're just flowing in and out with each other it's like ask and answer and answer and ask and it, it's just so satisfying now as we stay there can't you just feel that and haven't you had brief moments of that with different people stay there and feel that and then broaden it put that person put that relationship the two of you into a setting go to a restaurant and walk in and feel what it feels like for there to be two of you and feel your appreciation for the way your partner interacts with the hostess and appreciates the menu and even devours the food, chooses the food, likes the food, enjoys the food, makes you glad that there is food. Just broaden it and make it feel real to you. Practice those kinds of things. Do things that you like to do because you're attracted to a partner who also likes to do many of those things until those are really familiar feelings to you. And then you'll know it when you see it. In other words, the more aspects of that you practice for the pleasure of it, for the pleasure of it, for the pleasure of it, not to make something happen, for the pleasure of it, for the pleasure of the mind melt, for the pleasure of the specifying, for the 
pleasure of the, oh, a little more like that and a little more like that on every subject that matters to you. And then, ah, an avalanche of opportunities will start showing up and you'll know it when you see it. Right. Yes. So I had an experience recently that's not unlike some many, you know, fairly common where the note that I came home and wrote myself was just because you saw them doesn't mean you were supposed to meet them. So that's when I get into this fear of missing out. Miss oh, give us the note. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I was supposed to meet them. <laughs> I'm supposed to approach every attractive person that I like. <laughs> There's nothing that you're supposed to do, but what about collecting data and what happens? So many humans go out collecting data. How are you going to know if it's a match if you haven't identified the pieces that will match you and identified them with enough clarity that you know for sure? Is it a wish? Is it a hope? Is it a dream? Is it a well-established intention that you've identified and come out from enough angles that you're solid in what you know? And then what comes near it, you'll be able to tell. There's something else we'd like you to know. Hardly anybody else will approach this relationship that you are attracting with the power and the clarity that you're going to do as a result of this conversation. But there are a whole lot of matches out there and they will not know what's happening to them. <laughs> In other words, they'll just feel drawn to you for inexplicable reasons and you'll discover the depth of your relationship in days and weeks and months and even years going by. That sounds great. It is great. <laughs> It is great. Yeah. We want you to hear this. You've practiced your bag of marbles so well. And oh, it's just been thrilling. It's just been the most fun to lie in bed and think about it or sit at a restaurant and think about it or drive your car and think about it. It's just so satisfying to make that tapestry for yourself with the emotions that it will stir and all of that. And then as law of attraction matches you with a little bit of this and a little bit of that here and there you will be able to feel the intensity of the match the perfection of the match you will know it when you see it and you'll know close not quite close not quite but fun close not quite and then something else remarkable happens once you feel it and allow it allow yourself to think Maybe this is it. As the two of you are now experiencing together, each of you will define with even greater clarity. So the thing that we want you to take from this conversation is that you're molding this into place. You're not just snatching it from somewhere, boom, first crack out of the box. It's exactly what you're looking for. You are a creator. You want to create. You want to get better and better and better and better and better at it. We would like you all, no matter what it is that you're in the process of creating, we would really like it if you were to listen to us and then practice it a little bit and then were to say to us, I'm having so much fun with what I'm doing mentally that honestly, Abraham, it doesn't really matter if we meet up right away because this is way fun this thing that I'm doing. I'm bringing so much satisfaction to myself. In fact, I think I'm discovering who I am. I think I'm discovering the things I really like and why I really like them. There are people out there that have discovered those things in themselves that you will just bring out the more of that from them, you see. You could be and would be perfect strangers. You don't know each other in the flesh. You just know each other vibrationally, but your inner being has done all the vetting. And your inner being is not going to put off all its bells and whistles over the wrong one. Your inner being knows what you've been thinking about, knows what's active in your vibration, and knows what matches it. You'll know. You'll know because your inner being will know. Most people about most relationships try to make things that aren't workable work. And then they'll say, you don't bring me flowers anymore. And, and he'll say, I never did bring you any flowers. What are you <laughs> talking about? Did we get there at all with you? Yeah, that was helpful. Um, I was wondering too, 
where would dating apps fit in with the law of attraction? <laughs> Seems like that's me. If your desire is clear, that could work spectacularly well because they're all about compatibility. And if you are clear about what your compatibility points are and you enter them into the artificial intelligence system correctly, then you could have an avalanche of potential matches. You can hear hesitation from us. The reason that we think the law of attraction is a better matchmaker is because of the involvement of your inner being. Think of your inner being as the intelligence that lets you know. Now, before we go further, let's just talk for a minute. Esther has a phrase that she uses to herself. I got a hit on that. In other words, during a dinner conversation, as they're speculating, about it, Esther, she'll feel this. And sometimes it's because they're talking about someone who's dearly departed and they'll join the party and Esther will feel it. But always it's some rendezvous that you can feel. Do you get those feelings? Do you get those hits where you know? Well, that's what we're talking about. Ride the wave of those. And so... We want to offer a whole bunch of words here. Don't try to make it happen. Let it happen. But get out ahead of it by identifying what you really like and why you really like it. And you want your list to be made from your clarity about what you're looking for, not from your agony about not having found it. You want to make sure which end of the stick you're on before you step on the gas. So it's okay to get specific. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I the, think I get tripped up on the specifics sometimes. The thing about getting specific, if you get more specific, if you have vibrationally prepared yourself, the specifics are received by you. You get in the vicinity of what you're looking for. Your inner being knows you so well, will start feeding more and more clarity to you about what you want. So you think that you are conjuring the specifics of it when actually you're receiving the specifics of it because you are in the vicinity. That's a really important thing to talk about here. Did you get a card or anything that has the emotional scale on it today? Yes. Look at number eight, which is boredom, and look at number seven, which is contentment, and number six, which is hopefulness. And right about there, there's very dim letters that say tipping point. Well, what that tipping point is, if you have clarified for yourself what you want and you feel contentment and even hopeful and satisfaction, if you're in that vicinity, then you're in the place where you can start receiving the specifics from your inner being. So we're going to be really bold here. We're going to say something that we've not ever said to any of you before. The specifics do come from your inner being. Say it better. The specifics come from strong momentum. So they might come from your inner being if you're on the upper half of the scale. They might come from the depths of your despair if you're on the lower half of the scale. The more practiced you are on a point on this emotional scale, the more those specifics will match it. So let's say that you had a partner, broke up, you felt betrayed, at first you were insecure, had a lot of grief and depression, even jealousy, and went into revenge. If you get stuck in revenge, that's a powerful point of attraction. You'll attract people that have never been mean to anybody and they'll be mean to you. When you get a strong vibration going like that, you see, you just want to make sure that you're feeling good. That's why we think meditation is a really good tool before you start making your request to the universe about what you want. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next